Okay, so today I'm going to tell a story from the Bible because there's a few stories I just really, really like. They just always are really special to me. I feel like they teach me a lot, and this is one of them. So, thank you. So, we all remember that the Jews were carried away for a time, right? Captive in Babylon, right? And they were there for a while. There were a few different kings while they were there. And this is during the time when Nebuchadnezzar was king. We remember him, right? He was the one that went crazy, right, for a while? But this was before that. So, it says, Nebuchadnezzar grew in power until he was the greatest king in the world. Year after year, he added new countries to his kingdom. In every land, he was greatly feared. No wonder Nebuchadnezzar became proud of his success. At his order, an idol was made. It was 90 feet tall and was covered with gold. So 90 feet really tall. I always think your daddy, Mr. Stephen, is about almost six feet tall, so I imagine him stacked on top. That's how I imagine. That's how I figured out how, how tall things are. So that's 15 of him stacked up into the air. So that's really tall. It stood in the plain of Dura where all could see it easily. When the idol was finished, the king ordered all the officials of his kingdom to come and worship it. Princes, governors, captains, judges, treasurers, counselors, sheriffs, and rulers were commanded to come to the plain of Dura. No one dared disobey. The crowd of officials gathered. Among them were Daniel's three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. For some reason, Daniel was not there. We don't know. King Nebuchadnezzar felt even prouder as he looked over the great crowd that had gathered before the idol. At the king's order, a herald called out, O people of all nations and languages, when you hear the music, you must fall down and worship the king's idol. If you refuse, you must be thrown into a fiery furnace. And the music sounded, and the people fell to their knees. They were afraid to disobey, for none wanted to be killed. Nobody wants to be killed, right? I don't want to be killed. I assume you don't want to be killed, right? all bowed to the ground except three young men. These three stood up boldly. They were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because Nebuchadnezzar had made these three young men governors, some of the Chaldeans were jealous. As the music sounded, they watched to see whether Daniel's friends would kneel before the idol. When they saw the young men standing bravely alone among all the kneeling princes and nobles, they hurried to tell Nebuchadnezzar. Now, this is reason number one why I like this story. Remember last week when Jonathan talked to us about peer pressure, right? So when everybody that's your age or everybody in your group is doing one thing, what do you want to do? That one thing, right? Because none of us want to be different, right? We want to fit in, right? That's human nature. So it's not, e it's not easy to do something different. And I've often thought, you know, how easy would it have been for them to say, well, I won't actually worship the king, but I'm just going to kneel down because I don't want to be killed, right? We already established that. So how easy would it have been to say, well, in my heart I won't worship him, but I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to kind of hunch over so maybe they, yeah, but in my heart I won't really do it, you know? And that would have been easy for them, but they didn't do that, right? They stood boldly. They wanted everybody to know that they were taking a stand, that they were doing something different, that they were worshiping the true God. They said, Oh, King, you have decreed that every man should fall down before the idol when the music sounded, and whoever refuses would be thrown into the fiery furnace. When the music sounded, the three governors, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, did not obey. They will not worship or serve the golden idol you have set up. How angry the king was. At once he ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought to him. When they came, he asked, Is it true that you did not bow down? The king knew that these three were good rulers, and he thought perhaps they had not understood his command. He would give them another chance. Be ready, he said, to bow down when you hear the music. If you do not worship this idol, you will be thrown into the fiery furnace. Then what God will save you? So he said, just so you're clear, this is what will happen, right? He told him again. But bravely, 
the three Hebrews said, O king, we do not want another chance. We will not bow down before your idol, for we worship only the one true God. Our God is so great that he can deliver us from your fiery furnace. But even if he does not, we will not worship any idol. So they said, don't. I mean, again, how easy would it have been to say, well, okay, give me another chance, king. Maybe I'll be in the bathroom when, when the music plays this time. Maybe I won't be available to be there. So, but they didn't. They just straight up told him, no, don't give us another chance because we're going to do the same thing, right? So it, they had a lot of courage, right? Now the king was furious. He had even offered to give these young men a second chance to save their lives, but they had insulted him. He would be kind no longer. At his command, the furnace was made seven times hotter. His bravest soldiers tied up the three so that they could not even move. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not afraid. While they soldiers tied the strong ropes around them, they stood quietly. They did not even cry out when the men picked them up and carried them to the furnace. When the three were thrown into the fire, the flames leaped out and killed the soldiers. So this is not like when you have your fireplace and we have a fire at home and you're throwing a log on the fire and, you know, it's hot. Ouch, I burnt my hand. No, this was killing people outside of the fire. It was that hot. Mm. So this was a big deal. Nebuchadnezzar saw it happen. He watched the furnace and his eyes grew wide in astonishment. The three who had dared disobey his command were walking about in the fire. Their ropes were gone. The king looked closer. He could not believe his own eyes. He called to the nobles, did we not throw three men into the fire? Mm -hmm. Yes, O king, they replied. But now I see four men walking freely about in the middle of the flames, he cried out. They seem to be unhurt. The fourth one looks like the son of God. Nebuchadnezzar jumped up from his royal chair and ran to the door of the furnace. Loudly he called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come out, come out to me at once. In amazement, the princes and nobles and rulers gathered around and watched as the three men walked out of the fire to Nebuchadnezzar. The fire had not burned them at all. The flames had not even singed a hair. Then there was no smell of smoke on their clothes, which I think is pretty cool because, I mean, when we have a campfire, right, you smell like fire, right, just from being near the fire, right? They were inside the fire, and they didn't smell like smoke. Yet the strong ropes that they had been tied with had been burned off. The king was afraid to be angry with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego now. He believed they were great men, and he must honor them. Surely they served a great God, one who had all power. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed is your God. He took care of you because you trusted in him. Because you have not worshipped an idol, you have changed my command. The men round about listened carefully. The king said, I decree that anyone in any nation who speaks against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be killed and his house destroyed. Then Nebuchadnezzar gave these three brave men higher places in his kingdom. So that's one of my favorite stories because I think it's so neat that they were so brave and they were so courageous to stand up no matter what the consequence was. I mean, they could have been embarrassed that they had to stand up and everybody else was bowing down. But even beyond that, they had the fear of death. They were going to be killed if they, didn't if they didn't obey the command. And so I also think that it's really neat to think that God didn't save them from the fire. They went into the fire, and he saved them while they were in the fire. And so up until death up until what they thought I mean they thought they were going to die when they got in that fire and up until that point they were bold and they stood up for what they believed in so all right let's pray Lord thank you for this um, day thank you for these children and um, just the potential that they represent here and just um, just thank you so much for them the gift that they are and I pray that you would just be with us the rest of the service in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.